This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 358, recorded on June 7th, 2018. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech news reviews, product updates, and conversation when you can have it. My voice is a little bad tonight. All for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, I'm broadcasting live from the average guy at TV studios. Kind of with my sexy Barry White voice, maybe, maybe going on here kind of low tonight. Radio. Yeah. Radio voice. I guess the, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's, uh, little Mike. It's, uh, we mentioned last week, it's been super hot. Like it got hot all of a sudden. I think every plant pollinated all at the same time like i have just been miserable i don't know everything you. and you walk down the hall at work and you just notice everyone's got like the puppy oh. eyes and they're are sneezing you, and... you taking any meds for it or are you just trying to tough your way through it on days where i know i'm gonna mow i will take like a zyrtec but i try to not take as like i try I not to take early any medication i try to avoid it as much as possible i'm that way too i'm that way too but it's so stupid so now i can't talk right and it doesn't like it feels like a cold but it's not and so my voice is really raspy of course, we post a show with world class show notes each week out at theaverageguy.tv. Don't forget subscribe, rate, and review if you're doing if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe if you're on YouTube, both channels. Don't forget to hit the notification bell; it's right next to the subscribe down below there. And of course, if you're on Spreaker, you can follow us out there as well. Mike and I will do some short crypto if I have any voice left here at the end. I'll have to push it. Hopefully, we'll get Mike to do some more talking tonight. Although, Mike, I created all the show notes. So I know I'm not sure how that's going to go tonight, but we will go just as long as uh, we can get it done. A couple things I want to get started with is each week, uh, we're going to start taking uh, the, the, the show kind of the pattern we're going to go through is news, reviews, product updates, and conversation. And then if there's conversation in the Facebook group, we'll move that up to the front. That way you've got an opportunity. If you want to get something into the show, you got some ideas, drop it in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash the average guy. Easy way to find, get in. If you're not there yet, jump in there. I'll let you know, or I'll, uh, I'll let you in and uh, you can make suggestions. We'll bring it in and do it. And I way. like the latest ones because they've almost, they've been more conversational. They haven't been, you know, news is great. I love that you guys update the news in there um, and links. But like, I love the conversation we've had there lately. We've had some great conversation of questions. People have thrown out a question to the group and people have all responded with their, with their answers. That's what I really like to see the community. Cause that's the great part about the community is you get insight from a bunch of different people who would do things a million different ways. Yeah, no, it's a good, good way to do it. So we're going to bring that in. So conversations, if they're there, then news reviews, product updates. So that's kind of the show. We'll have we'll continue to have guests. We just lately I haven't had time to find them, and uh, Mike and I uh, just thought we'd share that with you. So uh, let's start with that. So Kathleen out in the out in the Facebook group wrote this. She says I'm building my first PC. I do photography for a living. She's a good friend of Mike Howard. So I'm mainly running Photoshop and Adobe Bridge. Should I consider 120 gig SSD? My programs say that they will use five gig. So a 256 seems like an overkill. So, Mike, let me throw that over to you. Building a new PC brings on, first of all, a little surprise, Kathleen's building her own PC. That's a little advanced. I know that's her. Awesome. But it's great if that's really what she's doing. Yeah. I'm building it from scratch. But you are you do a lot of photography. Talk yeah. a little bit about kind of the, the build you have. What do you recommend? I usually always go, so I, in some of my builds, I'll do a 120, I guess, SD, but that's only for machines that I, that I do not edit on, actually. So on any machine that I will edit on or use for photography or video specifically, I'll always go with at least a 256, if not 500. If you can go with the 500, I would go with 500. But I think 256 is good. And then just have whatever form of spindle drive in the machine that you can do, or if you have network attached storage, something where you can store all those photos after the fact. But it's a lot easier to have a lot of space on that SSD when you're doing video, especially. You know, if you're editing 4K video, that is, those are some very large files and they build up faster than you think. And if you want to be able to keep four or five projects, maybe on your SSD that you can go back and forth with, there's a lot of times where I'm jumping and I'm actually editing three different projects. You know, I'll get, okay, I'm doing this one. Okay, I need to jump to this one. And having all those being able to be stored on the SSD is, is nice. So I would go bigger if you can. Uh, if you're doing photography, I'm not really sure if you would need that. I'm not sure on the size of editing. Uh, video. For, yeah, for video. Video for sure, right? Yeah. Because those 4K projects, sometimes you can get up to, I mean, 100 gig, if not more than that. Um, you know, I'm doing short ones. If you were doing longer ones, I mean, you might need you know, a bigger drive than that. So per yeah. project. Yeah, it's Mike, it's Mike is saying, Mike Howard's saying in the chat room, 
500 for sure. I, I kind of agree with him that right now that kind of price point between 256 and 500 is the, kind of the sweet spot. Yep. I think 256 are the cheap, are, are, are the best deal. But if you're doing photography and you ever hope to do video or you're doing video, yeah, you really want that. It's kind of super fast cash is is what it is exactly. what you're going to use it for, yep. right? Exactly. You're going like to load it up, especially with Adobe. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with Adobe. I'd also get a whole bunch of RAM. I think I would try to max out at least 16 gig of RAM. You know, if I'm building it from scratch, I'm going to do at least 16. I think if you can do 32, probably not a bad idea. But price-wise, probably 16 would be okay. Yeah, but I think 120 is definitely way too small. Oh, totally. Yep, yeah, I think minimum is 256. And you go up from there. And I said scr I meant scratch disk, not scrub disk. Yeah, no, 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 right disc. on. Right on. Yeah. The other the other thing I think is that um right now three terabytes for storage is is the sweet spot if you're talking about a spinning drive. So I follow eBay stuff, all eBay sales all the time and and, and you can get some uh three terabyte drives now for fifty bucks. And so it's just that's kind of the, they're coming off they've you know they're 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 coming off a refurb or they're coming off something where they're fairly new some of them are brand new and they're white label and they're three terabytes i actually bought some of those for burst uh, they were 65 when i bought them they're now to 50 now 50 55 super nice if you were you know two of those with like stable bit on top of it or you stripe that out to six it's pretty good you're going to lose a little bit for the for the backup on it but um get get you pretty well so i think that's uh, i think five five uh at least 500 gig in there super fast 16 gig of ram and then some spinning disc local of course you're going to want to have some eventually going to want to move that off site get it backed up somewhere you're going to need some big big drives to get that done yeah um kevin also in uh kevin schoonover dropped in there uh phillips hue which we're going to talk about in a little bit later as we talk about father's day gifts philip hue white and color ambience the the a19s those are kind of their standard 60 watt equivalents the smart they have a full a four bulb kit going right now uh with the bridge for 199 bucks and a strip the yeah. strip's important too you get a strip in there because those right. tr strips are expensive that's actually a really good deal if you want to get started it is a great phillips hue starter kit i mean that's what they yeah. call it but it's a it is a good way to get started with phillips hue you do need the bridge it's kind of proprietary but I, I've also gone because of that. I'm just I put Philips Hue when I need a new light. That's what I'm putting in. Me too. Um, and and it's just it's super easy. I think those bridges support up to 50 lights uh, uh, per bridge, so you get you, you're going to have plenty on that. Uh, if you want to head out, the link is out. I don't. Let's, let's just make sure that link is still working as of this point. So we'll click on that. Kevin threw that in. It's an Amazon. Uh, it is on Amazon and it is Prime. And it's one ninety nine. So if you want to check that out, they're they're saying right now it's a it's a savings of uh, eighty bucks than buying them separately. Yeah, you're right. Those strips are they shouldn't be that expensive. Yeah. So you know? if you don't need the strip, you can actually get a much cheaper starter pack. But the strip are I mean those are pretty cool. If you want, especially lighting in a kitchen, you put those underneath like your cabinets up top or up top on the cabinets. You can add some really nice uh, ambient light there. I wanted to go with the Philips strip for a while. I actually went. I put a strip of LEDs on the back of my TV and but I just went with the super cheap ones that plug into the USB on the TV just because I didn't need it for Hue style. But the Hue ones are nice. I, yeah. I'm just I'm I'm still the biggest fan. You know, we haven't talked about Hue in a long time. It's something that it's it's actually kind of nice that you don't talk about it because that means it's just been working, right? Like it, those things, they they work well. I will say make sure you centrally locate that hub. I and I can't tell if it's the hub location. I know that those bulbs, I think the way they work is they kind of they can connect to each other. They don't all need to connect directly to the hub. I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, I have had some issues where, like, because I have ones outside. I have Hue bulbs, like, outside the ones above my garage so I can time them. And the ones outside my front door, those two are Hue bulbs. And sometimes they don't connect. Sometimes I, I can't connect to them. But so if I moved the box and it's all, it's been great since then. Yeah. Very yeah, they're great. Range. They're great for me. I, I don't, you know, they I've got them all over upstairs. The definite wife acceptance factor. Sarah has totally accepted automated lighting in the house and where we have it and in the different in the various spots. I got one over the litter box as well. So we can just tell Alexa to turn off the litter box litter box light. Mm -hmm. It's in a spot it's hard to get to. So that's the perfect space for kind of home automation to be able to talk to it. 
Um, so uh, super good. If you haven't uh, looked at, if you haven't started that uh, later on in the program, we're going to talk about some deals. This is a good deal to jump in on. I'll have another deal as we talk about Father's Day gifts. Yeah, and they have, if you're if you're looking at those Hue, the one thing we ran into is uh, our house has a lot of ceiling fans. And it has the light bulbs in the ceiling, but they're candelabra is what I call them, like the smaller form factor of the light bulb. But you can get these converters that go from the large size, like Philips Hue, the regular A19 bulbs, to that size. And we use these, so I got you can get a whole pack of them. I got this bag of them for super cheap like 10 bucks and so we now have phillips hue up in our ceiling fans just with a converter and the converter works fine it still powers the bulbs does everything you need so that's a little pro tip if you got some some of those size lights you need to fix yeah you know we just replaced the both ceiling fans in our kitchen and our dining room we did them at the same time so they would match uh which was which was pretty cool they all come led so um the the you know the lighting is just great it was super bright it's super efficient and then we got a new track. Uh, it looks like track lighting, but it's it's still an all-in-one piece. So you don't the 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 heads will move around, but it's not really meant to slide down, right? It's just okay. kind of there. So four lights, we can direct them in the kitchen. Super easy install. And while I was thinking about it, it actually that bulb had been out for maybe ten years. Not the bulb. I couldn't get anything working in that out. You know, in that it's fixture. Mm -hmm. Well, it took me ten years to get to it. We just left it off. And so I said, I said, when Sarah was out buying the, the fans, I just said, go, you know, buy something to replace that. I'll just replace it all at the same time. And then that afternoon, I went down to Menards, picked up all new switches. You know, if you're in there, you might as well just drop new switches. It's dangerous to go to that place. Oh, my God. I did, I did, I did uh, like nine switches that day. We had some old switches up. That was the garbage disposal and a light underneath the sink. Those got replaced. I got a brand new, I put a brand new, because you can't put in new switches and then there's an outlet next to it. There was a three, it's a three bay. Mm. Well, finding three bay outlets that switch, switch and plug is really hard. Like it's just that you have to order them in most cases. Well, so I was thinking, well, if I'm going to order it, I might as well order it from Amazon, right? So I, I got on there. Sure enough, stainless steel, like to match the rest of them. And then you're like, okay, well, if I'm doing that, then I could put those flat switches because it's right up against the wall and we put a lot of dishes there. Right. And not like the, you know, the regular light switches are going to matter. Well, flat, like almost the rocking ones. These were the flat ones. Yeah. yeah. So super flat right up against the wall. Uh, later on in the program, I'm going to talk about travel, um, you know, travel plugs. But I, I used one of them up there. It ended up not working. There's other things I need to, you know, get done there. Did but you consider was, using the smart switches so you could almost control them without the bulbs and you, it's done on the switch level? Yeah. Because I thought know, about that too. We're For moving. Me, it would be cheaper. We're moving. So I don't want to put anything permanent from a smart switch. Okay. That makes sense. Things. Yep. That makes and sense. so I've, yeah, I've been, I have not, I thought to trust me, started looking like, Ooh, what could I control out of that thing? Yeah. Um, when we talk about the, the power outlets, I'll show you why I kind of need to do something different, but um, yeah. So I replaced all the, all the light switches at the same time and you get, they look nice. It's new, clean, you know, get get them all set and, and done. So if you're thinking about lighting, and a lot of folks are, this really is the easiest way to get into home automation is lighting. If you haven't it really started, is. Yeah. If you haven't started, go ahead and get started with some lighting. <laughs> Kevin, thanks for dropping that out there. And Emily had a good point. She said 50, because we talked about the hub supports up to 50 bulbs. She goes, that sounds like a lot until she's always surprised when she says uh, at night, she says, Google, turn off the lights and says, okay, turning off 26 lights. Like they do add up quick. 26 is a lot. I'm not sure how many I have. I don't think I have 26 though. So I don't, I don't think yeah. I have that many, but I, uh, I have, I have probably about 16 or 17, I think throughout the house. But like you said, it's been, you know, we've had these things since I was in the apartment Right. And they're LED, so they last forever. And whenever one goes out, we replace it with one of those. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great way to do it. A uh, great way to get it done. And not great one way big to cost right away. It's kind of just a slow upgrade process. Prices are coming down too. I yeah. mean, it's, they're not terribly expensive anymore. Right? They're still more expensive than, you know, the old lights, but they're getting pretty reasonable. And I think, you know, a couple bucks a light and you're in business. So, so Mike Howard says in the chat room, he thinks he's got 15 at this point. So, yeah. So based on that, I've got a, you know, I'm sure we have one electrician that, that listens to this show, like electrician, you know, certified one. So here's my question. I have got in my bathroom, we've got two overhead fixtures and each of them have three lights. So imagine like over the bath, you know, they have just like three light stems that come out of there and the outer two on each 
fixture will burn out within a month of putting a light in there. And the middle light on each of them will stay like a normal light bulb, you know, a year or whatever it is. But I have replaced those outer bulbs probably three times for every time I change the middle bulb. Is that like a current issue going? Like there's more current going to the outside bulbs. Is that even possible? So if you uh, know the answer to that question, tweet me because I am baffled and I do not want to replace the fixtures. If it's not a fixture problem, if it's like, I know you have an electrical problem, like your current, there's too much. I don't know. I don't know how all that stuff works, but uh, it's baffling to me. And it, it, it's angry. I've gotten so mad that we no longer have the outer lights because there's no point in putting a bulb in there because it burns out in a month. So we just have, it's darker in our bathroom than I would like it to be because only the middle ones will stay around for more than a month. What's your Twitter? If they're going to tweet you. Yeah, at Uyghur Tech, W-I-E-G-E-R Tech. And then what about email? Email is, uh, let's just go mweger at gmail.com. Yeah, so M-W-I-E-G-E-R at gmail. Not, not everybody's on Twitter. I need to think about that because I haven't used, you know, I don't use my podcast email anymore. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't think about what email I want to give out. <laughs> Emily, I wonder if your wife's playing a, a gigantic prank on you. Sounds like something I would do to Mark. You know, Emily, said. I would not put it past her. And I bring it up all the time. I'm like, I, I, I'm going insane. Because I'm like, I swear I just replaced this bulb. So I finally kept track. I said, no, I've replaced the outer ones. And yeah, it could be a prank. And Never that is know. something she would do. Uh, yeah, that, that Hannah probably would do that. She and then would. She, she would laugh and giggle. You, Mike, you put a, uh, speaking of pranks, this is not a prank. You put a poll out there in the Facebook group. You wanted I did. information on a router. Talk a little bit about it and why folks should jump over there and uh, let you know. So I'm curious, and we've talked about this in the past two weeks, that I am just, I've become, over the past few years, just a huge networking nerd. I just I can never get enough when it comes to upgrading my network. And I have, I just, I love it. So what I was wondering is consumer routers have actually gotten a lot better in the past few years. You think of, we've got things like the Google On Hub and the Bitdefender box, things like that. I want to know if you guys, like how many of you out there, because we've got some, we've got some real network nerds in this audience. I know we do. So how many of you guys are using something like PFSense? And I listed PFSense as an option, but anything like that, PFSense, or I mean, I know there's some other ones. I think Sophos has a networking option like that. How many of you guys are using enterprise grade routing? And how many of you guys are using just consumer grade? Or I put an other option in there if you guys think that uh, something else, but the consumer grade routers used to be terrible. And now you can get some decent consumer grade routers if you spend, I think like in the 200 to $300 range. So just curious what you guys are using. Let me know because that's just fun for me to see what you guys are all using out there. I uh, we talked about it last week, but I've been using that Bitdefender box. And, Had, uh, yeah, how's it been going the last week? Things a little more robust than I thought it was going to be. Really? So yeah, it's pretty nice. Is so the UI I, nice? If you go into like, if you had to do a port forward or if you had to do super something like easy, that? super yeah. easy, yeah, super easy. Both uh, app on the phone and on the web. I mean, it's just it's a pretty good box. If you're going to use Bitdefender anyways, and you, you know, you might as well. It's you know. It's a hundred, I think, uh, what, what, 199, I think is what, uh, is what we have there. Um, I think I paid 149 cause I'm an existing customer, but their software 99 bucks unlimited. And so it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool, but that's what I'm using is that bit defender box. So far so good. I have no issues. It's never gone down. It's been up maybe three or four weeks, maybe never gone down. I haven't lost anything. No one's complained about the Wi-Fi. Everything works. Like the kids have come over and connected right to it using the existing SSID and password that I had put in the old one and the, in the on hub, the on hub is sitting sadly <laughs> not being on, used on the shelf unplugged. I, yeah. maybe, maybe I'll find something. And I, and I do the same thing. I kind of switch around. I'll try a new router for a while, but I have to say, I'll put this out there. I think the best setup you can do. And I, I mean, this would apply for home or enterprise is a PF sense router with ubiquity access points. I have been so like the integration between the two, like obviously they don't naturally integrate, but ubiquity access points, they're affordable for the AC pro. I think it's $130 for a nice ceiling mounted access point and the unify software for the access points gives you enough control that you can tag. You can have up to four SSIDs on a managed one. You can VLAN tag them. And that integration with PF sense is fantastic. The one complaint that I've, seen and i tried this out because i was thinking about going with a ubiquity unify uh, router they're one of their security gateways so the usgs from ubiquity but the interface the ui unless you want to get into the cli it doesn't give you the power options right like if you are a power user like i am with pfsense you're going to be 
disappointed with the UI of Ubiquity. But if you just use Ubiquity's access points along with PFSense, uh, I, I think that is a dynamite combination. I don't think it can get any better, to be honest. So I look, that's why I want to see what other people were thinking, because I think I found the perfect combination for any network. And you can expand it, right? You can grow that. PFSense can run on any hardware. So if you for a big network, small network, I think it works great. All right. Sounds good. I, I have it saved. Um, oh, hey, I'll need the opener. Um, I was saved. Sammy came by. Oh, she came down. You were worried uh, so that like, you have to get up. One more. I'm like, could you bring me one more? So thank you, my dear. Appreciate Probably that. Got two more. Sammy. No, nah, one, <laughs> one's good. One's good. I, I can't drink. I can't think for three in a night and make it through an hour and a half of a podcast. So well, it's a good recommendation, Mike. I I, uh, I like it. I uh, Mike had saying, uh, Mike thought I had run PFSense. I haven't run PFSense in a while, maybe a year or two. Um, my, that box that I was running it on the motherboard died. It was one of those, uh, uh, Adam where the chip soldered onto the board. One of those, you know, one of those cheap boxes I bought a while ago, that thing died. I just never got back to it. I ended up moving to the Google on hub, which had all kinds of promises of being upgraded and Google, it had all these antennas and Google was going to do all this stuff with it. And I really only saw two upgrades maybe in the whole time I had it. And they were terrible upgrades. They were it just wasn't the cool product that I'd anticipated from Google. It just, I mean, it worked. It was okay. I mean, I, listen to me, first world problems, right? Right. It worked. I'm sorry it worked. <laughs> you know, kind of deal. Sorry we made it work for you, Mr. Collison. Yeah. You know, yeah. Was that sorry not enough it worked for you? perfectly. No, I wanted upgrades. I wanted cool things to happen yeah, to no, it. Exactly. I wanted you to break it, upgrading, you know, kind of thing. And PF Sense just keeps getting better. And that's what I love about PF Sense is that I never have to worry about it. Uh, Mike Howard in the chat was talking about how Unraid, his, what he doesn't like about it is that it runs so well, he forgets how to log into it because he never has to log in and make any changes. And that's the way PFSense is. I log into PFSense for the monitoring, for the real-time stats. But besides that, I never have to make any configuration changes. I never have to reboot the box. It always runs. Now, obviously, it's running in a Dell R210 V2 for a home network. So it has more than enough power for what I'm throwing at it. So maybe that's why I'm not choking the system at all. I think it sits at like 1% CPU usage, if that, the whole yeah. entire time. Even when I'm running at full, when I'm maxing out my bandwidth, maybe it goes up to like 4%. Yeah. But I, I still think it's like one of the perfect combos in terms of router and access points. And I love, I am a huge fan, I have to say, of separating out router from access point. I've just, ever since I did that the first time, even if I had to go in the future, I might get a consumer grade router, but I'll turn off the access point and I will run my own access point separately. I'm not sure why. I just, I really like being able to run those on separate hardware. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Those little kangaroos would make a perfect PS Sense router, to be honest. That's just the right amount of power, just the right amount of RAM, just the right amount of space. You could put an SSD in that second drive. That's a good and point. It, I didn't think about that. Have a tiny little box. We've, You'd be you running know. you. I wonder if PF Sense can work with the USB 3. Uh, dongles to convert for yeah. Ethernet. Yeah. You'd have to run dongles. It does Correct. no or at least mine. I think yours has an Ethernet port, right? It does. It has one. Mine. mine does not. So you'd have to have yeah. two right. Two of those. Well, USB, it's got USB 3. So you could do USB 3 to network and you could yep. go now, out of there if you wanted to exactly. get it done. It'd be okay. It'd be a good way to do it. But yeah, no, it's good. Good recommendation. Um, I don't, I keep thinking I'll go back to PF Sense at some point, but so far right now, I've got Pit Defender Box. And, and uh, working that. Speaking of up, updates, Mike, you know, Spectre and Meltdown have been out a while. There's been a lot of BIOS upgrades that have been coming from the manufacturer. I kind of wanted to ask you, have you gone back into all your hardware and upgraded your BIOS? Have you done that yet? I've done it on only the easy machines, right? So if you're running Windows 10 and if you're on a Dell machine, it's pretty simple. You download their utility, you run it, and it runs the updates. Uh, on the R710, I have not done that. On the R210, I did run the updates before I flashed PFSense onto it. So before that became the PFSense box, I did run all the updates there. So luckily, but it was only because I installed that machine after the fact. If I had already had the machine installed, to be honest, I probably would not have run the update by now. The other machines, yes, I have. And I think that accounts for about 75% of my machines. So I, I think I'm relatively good in that regard. Yeah, I haven't done anything. I need no. to I need to take a weekend. I've been kind of waiting for everything to work itself out. There have been they've done BIOS updates and then like, oh, we found something else. There's a new update, right? And I've just kind of been waiting. So probably in the next couple weekends, I'll block out a morning, you know, a Sunday morning and just plan to 
go to every single one of them. Just every PC has a different BIOS. Right. So, okay, how do I get in there? How does it update? Some of them do it dy dynamically. Some have software you can do it with. Some mm -hmm. don't. So it's a little bit of a pain, you know. And and then you got to check, is this BIOS update taking care of the Spectrum, you know, Meltdown? Yeah. Although I think it's just mostly Spectrum at this point. I think Meltdown was taken care of mostly by Windows. But, um, yeah. Spectre. Yeah. yeah, Spectre, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Christian's coming on next Tuesday. We're gonna I'm gonna ask him the same question. So we're having not not here, but I'll have him on Cyber Frontiers next and week. And if you if you do not know or if you are not up to date on Spectre and Meltdown, or at least you didn't you don't even know what it started out as, go back and listen to the Cyber Frontiers. Jim had Christian on, and Christian did a great explanation of Spectre and Meltdown. I listened to that and it, oh, it was just, it was clear. It was a great, he has an analogy in there. And I can't remember how he does. It. I think it's like a cone yeah. listening into a different room, if I'm remembering right. And so, I mean, listen, I was, it was a few months ago. I can still tell you exactly how he described it. It was that great of an explanation. So definitely go check out that episode. If you, uh, if you missed the whole specter meltdown debacle. Well, hopefully Christian's back uh, Tuesday, the 11th, uh, June 11th. We'll have him back in cyber frontiers. He's been super busy. He's got some good, Good news to bring back to us. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in business. So I have some work to do. CEO, Jeff Bezos, uh, name and Christian pretty, Johnson. Bezos is out. Yeah, Johnson, Christian Johnson's Johnson is in. in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. We, should, we shouldn't say that too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Just saying we have devices in yeah, our, in our right, within, within shot. Yeah, that's very true. It. Mike, um, when you travel, you know, these little things, we've talked about them before, right? These yes. little, tra it's little my favorite. That travel exact one. plugs. I got a new one, but I wanted to ask you, what, what do you use? What's your favorite thing to use when you're on the road and you need power? Yeah, Anchor branded products have been my favorite. Those are my go-to. I have three different models of the Anchor charger, depending on what use case I have. So Anchor, I have their five port fast charger system, but it's the one that has, so it's a it's, it's uh, I don't have it with me right now, but it's a box. And then to plug it into the wall, it's got like a three foot cord, which I like. So that is like my, if we go to my wife's farm, for example, and I know I'm going to need to stretch across, like to find the nearest plug, I'm not going to be right up against the wall. That's the charger I'm going for. Cause it's got a nice three foot cord onto it. The one you just held up from Belkin. I have this, I have that exact one for travel. And I also have the anchor branded similar version. That's going to be right if I'm going to a hotel and, you know, because every hotel now has the lamp that has the outlet in it. It's right next to your bed. That's going to be a fantastic charger for for that uh, scenario. So I have those two, but Anchor has just been, they are rock solid. I have now, I have their Bluetooth boombox, their tiny little boombox. I have their chargers. I have their cables. I have their, they make this perfect adapter. If you have a car without Bluetooth, but you have an aux cord, Go search. I'm gonna. It's the Sound Sync Anchor Sound Sync, and it's just it plugs into the aux and it gives you this round, nice little uh, power button that you would stick to your dash, and it gives you Bluetooth access to your car. I am just a huge Anchor fanboy. Yeah, they're good. They're, they're I, fantastic. I've, I've Every got, product I've had. I've got an Anchor uh, USB charger, so it's got five USB, you know, areas on it, fast charging. And you plug it in, so you it's you know it plugs into the power. And then you got five ports on it sitting right by my printer. All my all my wireless devices now are over on that thing, uh, getting charged. the The Belkin one; these have been real popular. And, they have been. And yeah, I have the exact one. Two on the end and uh, three, and so two USB on the end. There's a there's a single amp and a double in a two amp version. Two point one, I think, is what it is. Um, uh, this is the this is the one amp version, so it charges a little bit slower at this point. Which in an airport, you you know, it's it's kind of it's you know, it's like, uh, I need it a little faster these days, mm -hmm. right? It's the the other cool thing. It's got the swivel. I was just going to say, you're, you just did my favorite feature when you were playing with it. Yeah, it swivels. Yeah, you got this little swivel plug here, which is which is kind of cool. And it doesn't have to lock into a certain angle. Which I, you can have it like at a weird angle. It really, If you're trying to fit it into some weird corner, it works. Yeah, in the airport, like if, and this doesn't happen too much anymore, but it used to be, you know, some jackass would be d sitting by a plug and he'd have both his things plugged into the two that you need. Yep. And and I'd always, I'd always pop up and say, hey, can we share? And almost nobody says no. You know, like, oh, sure. So yeah, you why would they? unplug, right? plug, right? So, so pretty handy to have. Um, uh, when we, when I put in that new outlet in the kitchen, the kitchen has three plugs and I only have two outlets and we were using this really awful uh, old 
you know, three, one to three, you know, you'd plug it in and have one on the top, one on the end and yes. one on the uh, super ugly. It was super dirty. It's probably too. orange. It was, yeah, it, it, it was. Well, no, this one was white, but it was like it was like 1960s white. It was okay. bad. Like yeah. it was really bad. So I went on Amazon and this is you ever bought anything on Amazon where the picture looks one way. And when you get it, it looks completely different. Right. Usually when I have buy that, I think it's going to be a lot bigger and then I get it in person and it's like really tiny. That's usually oh. the problem I run into. So this one was the opposite. Okay. So I bought this. I don't know if you can see that there, but I bought this. It's a, it's like J server or J yeah. J server, I think is the company. It's an Amazon brand that, you know, it's one of those off brands, 13 bucks. I think it's pretty big. I expected it to be half the size. Like, yeah. I was just about to say that's pretty big. I, I was thinking more like this size, like it yeah. was good, you know, and when you when you put the two like in, so my what the reason I wanted it is because I got this new espresso. We talked about it last week, yep. and it's got a big honking plug because that thing draws some juice when it's spinning that cup and it's heating that water. So that plug is pretty thick, and to come out of the back of the coffee maker and then into the plug. Yeah. So I wanted a side plug. Right, I, this, that's what I wanted. I wanted it sticks this so far out. I have the same problem. I, okay, I'm glad you have because with my Keurig, it like sticks out and then it the machine doesn't go all the way back against the wall. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so I wanted a side plug so I could come up and side and, and plug it into the site. Now, they make and now this is what I think I'm gonna have to get. They make these flat wall units where you plug it in and it's got the plugs on the side. Like it's it's just, mm -hmm. they're just there, right? And it, it replaces the two with four or whatever. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to go with. But in the end, actually, so when we plug this one into the wall, because of the way it's built, it's not like that stable in right. that plug, right? You can, I don't know. It just, it, and it freaked Sarah out. She was like, oh, can you take that thing off? It just feels like it's going to, like, I'm going to get electrocuted on this thing. Now, when I'm traveling, you know, you don't care. You plug some things into it, yeah. you plug it in, you don't care. When it's in the kitchen completely different story. I thought this would be pretty cool in the kitchen because I was going to get a new one. So I got this too big for sure. Like you plug this sucker in, it's got one, you know, one thing. It takes up the other one too. Like you can't, you can't use anything. So, yeah. This. You don't gain a plug. You just gain three USB ports essentially. Yeah. But, well, yeah, basically. Well, there's one on the side and one on the top, one on the side. So it does oh, so work. Three. Three. So you do gain one. Okay. You get three USB, you get three on the side. It's going to become my travel one right this will replace i think so yeah it's got the fast charging up front which is what i want when i'm on the road it's got an on off switch so you can turn it on and turn it off which is pretty cool and i can still plug it into a single you know plug it into the lamp you yeah. know in the hotel room plug yeah. it in you get three cords i think it'll work great nice little compact yeah, i just think that those ones that if it covers both outlets i'm out that's what i love about the belkin one is that it doesn't it it swivels out of the way so, but yeah. you're right. It's much more stable and it's smaller. We actually use that Belkin one that you showed. We actually have that plugged in right by, we have a bed down here for guests and a nightstand. We have it plugged in there. Everyone, for some reason, when they stay here, they're like, oh, it's nice of you that you put that there on the nice of the bed. Cause like, you know, her mom and dad, they're like we were both able to charge our phones and then you could plug in anything. We just use the USB ports. And if we forgot our brick, it's got the two USB ports. People in a guest room situation, people really like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I spent 15 bucks on it. I'm not going to send it back. I'll probably use it. Price. Yeah, no, it's, it was, I think, even cheaper than that. So um, it's just one of those things you think about. Uh, Mark Robson says out in chat, he goes, we use a USB hub with something like, or no, this is Emily. We use five uh, the USB hub with like something like five inputs. Apparently everything I own is USB powered. That's it true. Is. Yes, That's true. Then Mark says he has one the size of a pool cue, you know, the chalk you know, the little yeah. chalk the little ones. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is not the size of a, I mean, it's, it's as big as my phone for God's sakes. So, right. um, anyways, a little frustrating. I'll still use it. Not Although, a big deal. Is it big enough? If you plug it into the wall, you could set a phone on top of it. Someone could charge, like, you know, like, could you be charging a phone and set it on top? I do oh, like sure. that. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's a nice little, they may, that's a nice, that's a know. thick enough. Cause they you, make you those. Would, I don't know if you've seen them, but for, uh, especially for dorm rooms, it's like a, a circle that you put over the outlet and then it's got a tray. So you can just, you know, set your phone on the outlet while it's charging. Yeah. I can, little benefit for you. I'm going to, um, I'm going to probably get, and Kevin, this is what Kevin just put in the chat. Although Kevin, I have to be careful. So Kevin put one of those big APC kind of takes up 
you know, it kind of covers the entire outlet. And then you got two USB in front and some, and you've got six along this each side. I really, um, I've got a switch on the, just to the left of that plug. That's pretty close. So I need to make sure whatever I'm buying doesn't take up another switch gotcha. um, to do it. These are 15 bucks. That's, a, that's not a bad way to go. And it's really what I need because I would get those three along the side of the wall. So Kevin, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give this one a whirl that you put in there. Um, and I bet those are the fast ports, the two amp fast ports. So uh, good deal. You don't really think about it until you're replacing things. And then you're like, oh, this guy, this looks like hell. I should get something better. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, so it's one of these things we got three plugins and only two places to plug it in. So I have to figure this out. I'll have to check it out. I'll measure it, take a look at the dimensions and, uh, and see if that works for us, Mike. Um, so father's day is coming up. You yeah. and I, both dads, what's, what's father's day normally like for you? You're a new dad. How is, how is, la dad. how is last year's father's day for you? Oh man, last remember? year was great. That yeah. memorable, huh? <laughs> yeah, they got me. I can't remember if it was for Christmas or Father's Day, but they got me my most, my favorite coffee mug. They got me one of the Yeti coffee mugs mm. that they make, and I have it at work, and it keeps, so I'll fill my coffee up. And you know, at work, you get called into a meeting, you get on a call, and by the time, you're always dumping out cold coffee at work because you just didn't have time. You got called away from your desk, and it's that cold. That coffee mug keeps it warm for hours, so it's been fantastic. So uh, it wasn't tech related, but it was one of the most memorable gifts that Emmett ever got me. And Emmett's my oldest son, and I oh, I love that thing. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a Father's Day is a weird day for for dads because we just had Mother's Day, and you know we've kind of gone all out. Hopefully, you've gone all out. Yep, made mom feel special. Dads are kind of like, mm, but sometimes we buy our own things. Let's just admit it, right? It's Dad's Day. Yeah. Sometimes we do it. Sometimes we sometimes we get stuff, good stuff. We don't. And I was kind of thinking, you know, okay, if you're going to spend money on yourself for Father's Day, let's keep it reasonable. So I thought, hey, what are some really cool gifts I, that I found on Amazon during Father's Day? Under 50 bucks. So if you're thinking about you're going to sneak out, right, or you're going to buy something on your own, mm -hmm. here's some things you can probably sneak onto the credit card. There you no, go. Nobody will notice, right? Yeah, that was for sure. You know, or on Monday, you know, Father's Day wasn't as great. It, or if maybe you're not a dad. Maybe you're not a father. But you still want to celebrate Father's Day. Why wouldn't you? Here's some opportunities to pick some things up okay. that, uh, that that might be, they're, and they're all under 50 bucks. Okay. So first, we were talking about plugs. Very first one I've got here is a Wemo uh, mini smart plug. It's Wi-Fi enabled, and it works with Alexa. So single plug outlet. I'll, I'll drop the, uh, the link to it. Oh, let me get this link. We'll drop it in the chat room so you guys can follow along with us. These will be in the show notes if you want to pop out there and take a look at them. So this Wemo, the, the mini smart plug, covers one outlet. I love it. It's the outlet below it can is there just fine, but it gives you the ability to control anything from your from either your Google Assistant or from your Amazon device. A gr another great way to get involved or to get into, um, you know, into the smart home. Thirty yeah. bucks. Totally. Thirty bucks. Yeah. TP Link also makes another great one. Uh, we use the TP Link brand of those plugs. They're fantastic. I have I have both. The Wemo is actually right above me because I use it to plug in my shop light, so I can control the shop light with it. Um, and that's the other thing. Think of some creative uses for those plugs. We got Hannah's parents one of those plugs, and we thought actually, so they are they live on a farm, so they have their house and they have their shed detached. And attached to the shed, they have an outdoor dog, a huge dog kennel for their dogs. And they have a little dog house in there with a heat lamp for the wintertime. So they can go hit sit in the, in the they, nice and toasty. Well, he's always going out and they're having to switch the switch on the heat lamp. So I was like, hey, put the thing out there and then you can, you know, control, control the dog lamp. You know, so things like that. It doesn't always have to be a light. I mean, that is a light. But something that you go and have to do something to turn on a switch. You can yeah. always use those little... Yeah, which is what I love about it is the old ones used to take up, they were big and bulky. And this one is literally just the width of one plug. Yeah. And it's got a follow through. Yeah, it's got that plug. So you plug it in, then you plug what you want to control into it, and you don't lose that second plug. Right. Uh, which is pretty cool. Emily wants to remind me in there, it does work with Google Home Assistant as well. So if you're using the Amazon device or you're using Google, Either way, these these a lot of these devices, and one of the things I like it's Wi-Fi enabled. Yes. No bridge connects to the Wi-Fi. Exactly. 
pretty great. So, and uh, Kevin also said that the TP Link caught, uh, I know I'm going to say it, Casa. I think, so the Casa, I think right? So. Like home, like Casa, because Casa is the app you use of those TP Link ones, uh, works with Alexa, Google, and Cortana. So yeah. those, they're all great. Other Jim says Christmas tree lights convinced my wife that is the perfect so way to. It totally is. And you can put yeah. them on a timer. And some of those devices also track how much electricity they're using. Kind of cool. I think the TP Link one does, it tracks how much electricity it's pulling. Mm -hmm. it oh, they do? No, stone. right. Those are a little more expensive, but it's yeah. pretty awesome to kind of keep track. Emily says uh, they got her, they have a window AC unit Ooh. attached to one, right? And so you could. You could do, then use the the assistant to turn it on and off. So that really shows how much power it can pull through too. Because sometimes you got to watch out that it's not going to pull to you know like a refrigerator or, you know, something like that. So that, that's cool that they can keep up yeah. with the unit. Yeah, the timer thing is what's nice. Is say hey, leave it on only till this, or you know, turn it off at this time, and uh, it gives you a great opportunity to do it. So if you haven't made that jump. Here's a good way to do it. These Wemo plugs, thirty bucks. Links in the show notes. I just full disclosure my links don't work anymore for affiliate. So they're just there for your convenience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second one. Oh, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I, I didn't. I, I hadn't, I didn't have the show notes pulled up. They closed on me. So I'm pulling them back up. I didn't know if you had another one. I was going to give you yeah. one. Oh yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get to hold that for just a second. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll get it next. So the next one is a tile sport. So have you ever lost your keys, right? And you, the, you've got these, these things, they're, they're called tile. They're key finders. You, uh, it, it allows you to, it's got a little hook. You can attach them to your keys and no matter where you go, if you lose something, you can find it again. Have you seen these, Mike? I have not. Yeah. So it's not the sport. I have the regular one. So I haven't seen the sport model. Yeah. 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 I so, love tile. You can slip them into a wallet. That's where I, that is my number one use case for them is my wallet. Yeah. But the sport version just is a little, a little more durable, right? Okay. I think what they were finding was that, you know, people were putting keys in their pockets and, you know, running and tossing them around and, and what have you. A two pack though, uh, of this one, the, of the link I have is 45 bucks. So not terrible. So if you're losing your keys, can't find on your phone, some of those kinds of things, this will help you find it again via a map. It'll tell you exactly where it's at. It's, it's one of those. I, I constantly am losing my keys. And um, unfortunately, I haven't had to use something like this. But for some of us, let's admit it, for some of us, we need to find things again, mm -hmm. right? Just little kids carry things off, right? You forget where you put stuff, they can find it. And the great part is, so those participate in what's called like this, uh, if you put that into lost mode, what that does is allows anyone with the Tile app, is so any phone walking around with the Tile app can help find your item. To say, hey, I lost this. So now if it, it'll say, hey, okay, so now I'll, I have the ability to connect to any tile app and then someone without them knowing, so I could be walking around and it doesn't alert me, obviously, because it doesn't say, hey, did you know you just helped someone find their wallet? It's right around you. You should probably look and grab it without notifying the user. It's a smart way to do it. I'm walking by someone's lost wallet. It connects to my phone real quick, sends the location and sends it back to the person saying, hey, someone just actually, we found your device. It's here. Yeah. Very cool feature on those tiles. Yeah, it's it hasn't been a product that it launched to a lot of fanfare and then it's been pretty quiet. I think they've been selling enough. They've been around for a while. Yeah. The uh, only complaint I have is battery life, though. Mm, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's only about a year. Okay. So you get one year out of them. They do offer you, you'll get a bunch of emails after a year after you register them that they will offer you your next purchase at half off. So if you want to upgrade you your tiles or if you need to get a new one because of battery, but just keep in mind that, you know, if you have four of these, take half that price and that's going to be your charge every single year. Essentially, it's like, a, it's, you know, it's a use charge, essentially. Yeah, you think of it 15 bucks. It's like a subscription, 15, yep. 20 bucks. You said you had one to to share with us. You got a you got a gift under fifty bucks. Yeah, I mean it has a cord, right? So can it can be considered tech. It does oh, plug in. Oh, oh, totally. But I yeah, love totally. these. Um, it, Lowe's is doing a sale. I think some other companies are doing a sale, so you can get right at forty nine ninety nine. Uh, the a Dremel. And I have just those Dremel tools. It's something that's on my father's day list. My dad has one that every time I am just shocked at how many things you can use these things for. So if you can get into the model at 49, that's the Dremel 3000. So it comes with a 28 piece kit. I mean, you've got anything. If you need to polish up something, if you're trying to cut uh, tubing, it's got, these things are just so useful. We were shocked. We got a brand new outdoor table concrete table super heavy it took four of us to get that table into our backyard because it's so heavy but we got it for a super steal because 
uh, when it arrived at the store, it was crooked because they forgot to trim down four huge steel bolts on the side. So it was it was resting. It wasn't resting right because though they forgot to cut the bolts at the very end. Uh, my dad's Dremel went right through it. I mean, like nice. in seconds. You get the right attachment. Dremel has a bunch of attachments. You get the right blade for it. And it just, I mean, it chopped through the steel bolt. I was just shocked. So these things are rock solid. I love them. And they're, they're over Father's Day, right before, they're always doing sales on Dremel. So it's a, I think it's something you can get into for cheaper. If you want to spend more money, the bigger ones are amazing, right? Like you, if you step up to the $100 model, you get a little more horsepower. To, it depends on what you're using it for. We even have the dog version. So they make one for your pets. And it's a nail trimmer. So instead of, oh. if I, I hate clipping my dog's nail because I've made him bleed too many times. So I get the quick is what it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, so they make a Dremel dog and it's just literally a little buffer. And it's like 20 bucks even. And it's, nice. it just runs. How does, Petey, and, how does Petey do when you're buffing his it. nails? He hates, he hates being combed. That dog is, uh, it's, he's an interesting little dog, but no, yeah. he hates it. Yeah, no worries. But well, other dogs love it. Hey, you know what I also heard on the radio? Uh, Lowe's is also now carrying Craftsman tools. Like they so, they are. I was just in there. Lowe's is right mm -hmm. next, and they are very interesting. My uh, father-in-law actually really liked to see that. We were talking in pre-show or before we even came on. Um, it's time to. I need to sharpen my lawnmower blade, and I bought one of those tools. So it's the Craftsman's version of a Dremel, except it's bigger. And it, okay. you can actually make a router out of it. It's got a little router attachment. So you can put a router blade in it and make a, you know, you can kind of make a router out of it. You can, you, it, I use it as a sharpening tool. It's got all kinds of different, you know, like 18,000 different things you can do with it. Dremel, I have a Dremel too. You know, Dremel's about that big. This circular, wrote, you know, is about that big. Really, really nice. Very, very durable. Sears has been hard to find, right? They're going, they're pretty much out. We have a little Sears shop down here in Bellevue. Um, but I heard on the radio available at Lowe's. Did you, did you see them when you were there? Yes. Is it a big selection or, or, um, we saw it on an end cap. We were needing to go get paint real quick and get back out. So we didn't have time to look around, Yeah, but yeah, they're uh, definitely, I mean, they are advertising it a ton. You walk into the store, there's no way you will walk into a Lowe's and not know they're selling craftsmen. Now they are making sure that, that is front and center. I was in my wife's car. Emily's like radio. What's that? So I was in my wife's car and I hadn't hooked my phone up to her Bluetooth yet. And so I was listening to FM, you know, country station or something like that. And uh, I heard, you know, Lowe's and now Craftsman, now at Lowe's. I was like, Whoa, okay, that's a big, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're missing your Craftsman tool, they're not always the best. Although uh, the ones I have are pretty good. So, Me too. you know, yeah. I have a pack of them and I love them. Yeah. Uh, my son last year, I think maybe even for Father's Day or one of those, he bought me those ratchets that, you know, go, that you can go this you know, it, you, you put it on the bolt and then you just turn it over and it goes the other, you know, it can go the other way. Okay. And a little, that, you know, a little hand ratchet, just great, just great tools. So um, if you've been missing craftsmen, head over to Lowe's. If you're here in the United States, anyways, head over to Lowe's. Okay. I told you later, I was going to bring this up again, but if you, Phillips Hue, there's actually a deal, a deal going on right now on, on Amazon as well. They have that hundred, that 99 deal, a 199 deal, but you can also get just the, the bridge. So if you wanted to get into this cheaper right now, and I'll throw the link in the chat room, let me do that. You can buy just the bridge for 50 bucks. If you wanted to get in, um, and, and not only that, but you can get a pack of four bulbs for 50 bucks. So a hundred bucks. hundred, you could be in. Yeah. hundred bucks gets you in. Now, no, no uh, tape, right? No, you're, you're not getting that, the, the tape the or the, yeah. the strip. Thank you. Yep. But uh, you can get the bridge and the bulbs, 50 bucks each very each. nice yeah same things worked with work with our amazon amazon devices works with google assistant works so if apple you want to yeah yeah open i don't know if you use apple home jim but it's actually a pretty good way if you have um an ipad that just kind of sits at home that can actually act as kind of a yeah, I was, you know, the Apple home server technically, right? Like the always on device in your home to send out timing commands, to do all sorts of fun stuff with that. So I've, I've actually played around with Apple home and I like it. And it also allows you to have the ability to, Hey, I'm not near one of my Amazon devices. Let me just say, you know, blank Siri, turn off the lights. Right. So then any device you use is connected up. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it works out. That that actually works out um, that pretty well. Emily reminds me, or no, Ken reminded me, those wrenches are called open-ended 
uh, ratcheting wrenches. There we go. I'm having trouble talking because my voice is so chunked. But uh, yeah, they're really they're really cool tools to have. I actually cleaned out my garage this weekend. It was really nice out there. So I'm like, oh my god, the winter. I don't know about you, Mike, and I I don't know about you in your neighborhood. You probably can't get away with this, but in my neighborhood in Bellevue, if there's anything I don't want, I just put it on the curb and it disappears in oh, hours. Really? Oh yeah. 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 So like the, we replaced the, the ceiling fans, you know, and we got two new ones and I just took them out and put them on the curb. Gone. Somebody, somebody took them. they just, they came by and picked them up. I don't know if they're scrapping them huh. or if they're going to use them, uh, but they're gone. I, I had a bunch of metal I had cut up and just put in an old garbage can, you know, like, uh, like pipes and some other things we'd ripped out some stuff, left it on the, on the, um, sidewalk gone. Like, just crap metal. Now metal's worth something, yeah, right? You can recycle right. it. So people do that, but yeah, I've had, I like, I don't have to throw anything out anymore. I just put it on my curb. Do you use the uh, next door app? Uh, uh-uh. no, I, I need to though here. Yeah. Cause that's where I see most of the time is people will post an extra app. Hey, put this at the end of my driveway. First cut, you know, come get it if you want it. And it'd be like, you know, grills are something people upgrade their grill. They'll put their old grill out there. Yeah and things like that so yeah usually yeah. i see those posts but i've never tried it i've never put something out on the end i should roll it out dude i roll I it out there and I it's just gone this wheel so since the person who owned this house before me they when they redid the backyard they have this wheelbarrow full of stone and it's actually nice stone like stone pieces that you would use to make up a wall and but the wheelbarrow the wheels are deflated and slashed so it sits there you can't move it and it's full of heavy stone and it's sat in my garage since i moved in and I, I need someone to just come, come take it. So maybe if I can get it to the edge of my driveway, it'll just disappear. And then put it on Facebook and be like, Hey, these are free. These are free. Yeah. But um, he was like, you know, the moment that you get rid of it, like are uh, the wall, we're going to have like the walls get like some of that is going to chip and we're going to wish we had that stone. Cause I'm sure it's expensive. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't know. Yeah. It's driving me nuts. It's yeah. been in that same spot for two years since I moved in. It has not moved. Isn't that funny? We ha- we all have those things. Like I have skis in the garage that are ancient. They're 20 years old. I need to get rid of them. I have ski boots down here. Nobody's going to wear them anymore. I just, I can't, I can't let them go. I'm yeah. having a, I'm having a hard time letting them go. You know, part of it is everybody's like, just take it to Goodwill. And I'm like, it's Nebraska. Like Goodwill is not going to be able to move ski boots. Ski boots. Old ski boots. Yeah. yeah. No. And there's some sentimental value. I mean, uh, there's a pair there that I bought in Germany, you know, 30 years ago when I I live there. Um, so yeah, it's hard stuff to- like that. I've started to Google like cool project for old ski boots. Oh, that's a good so, idea. So for example, uh, the one that I found is my mom has a, the old, I call it a lampshade iMac. Do you remember Mac came out with this iMac that it's a round base. It's got an arm on it and the screen, you could just like pit it however you wanted. And people have started making lamps out of them. And my mom has this thing down in her basement. And it's a super cool old Mac, but it just sits in the box. I'm like, if you made something out of it, then you at least get to enjoy it a little bit. So I've been doing a lot of that. I have some of those things like you do. And so I've been trying to find projects to turn them into something really cool. Um, Cool things to make with ski boots. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's going to be anything. But we Googled an old lamp. Uh, We had this kind of old lamp, but it found out you could unscrew the base and my grandma filled it with golf balls, and then it became like this golf lamp. It was like a lamp that was – it kind of looked cool because my grandpa has a golf-themed room. Really cool old use for an old lamp they were going to throw away. T- took me to a Pinterest site, and it's people. They're making planters out of ski boots. See, like, that's, that's what I mean. Like kind of cool things you could do yeah, with them. At least then you could yeah. keep a sentimental value, but it wouldn't just be sitting up in your rafters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, uh, flower pots, somebody made a table. They cut the skis in half, flipped them over, mounted them on a piece of wood, made tables out of them. Wine rack. Mm-hmm. Uyghur, you are so smart, my friend. Well, yeah. You, oh, a, ta- a chair. Somebody made a chair out of the skis. So like the, oh, yeah, yeah, the up and back I've is. Seen one of those in Colorado, actually. Like it was uh, a rock chair made out of old wooden skis. A bench, you know, with the skis. They've, they've put that in there. So wouldn't that be cool? Like then yeah. you get a mailbox the value around like mailbox, it. mailbox Ooh, post. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, fences. Holy cow! You are so smart, Mike. All right. Well, I have to 
I'll have to go through here and uh, figure out some things to do. Some uh, things to do with them. My old skis. One more gadget before we go. Yeah. And I think I'm buying this before the show is over. So I'll throw the link to it in the chat room. But it is, and it'll be in the show notes. It is a D-Link HD Wi-Fi security camera, indoor, night vision, remote access, works with Google Assistant. And and I, I'm, I don't know if it would need to work with the Amazon device. Really? But Wi-Fi. So super easy to set up, 35 bucks. Now, well, let's say 36. And, um, and Mike, I have found what I'm doing is I have a, I actually have a camera from an old Home 8 setup that I did, a security system I'd gotten at a meetup with Dave a couple of years ago. I set it up, put it in the, and I was kind of using it for packages. What I'm finding is people can see that light. So there's, like when they come to the door, they see the camera and I have people commenting, oh, you have a security camera in your window. Ah, so it's noticeable. I haven't looked at it. It's not even set up, to be honest with you. It's plugged in so that yep. the red light, the night light, light is on. That's all it does. I think that's enough. You know, it's oh, like those are to turn enough. I mean, yeah. that's the main reason. And I have a huge sign. I am the old guy, like the old paranoid guy. I have the huge sign that says this you know, this property is monitored 24 seven and all they have to do is look up and in my eaves, they will see on every corner, a security camera, right? Like, and even if it's just a deterrent for one person, that's all you need. Yeah. Um, this is a great find though, Jim, yeah. $28. No, for... which, what, what are you seeing? Where are you uh, seeing? I clicked it? on your link and it just took oh, me really? to. Cause mine says 30, 35, 99. Hold mine on, says 28, 47. Oh, oh wait, what, what do you got going well, on that's there? weird. In the box, Ooh, so it does say twenty eight forty seven. Isn't that weird? I might, I might just order this just because, just to give it a shot because that's pretty that cool. Is, that is weird. Well, cool. All right, in Except the car, it doesn't have Ethernet, and I have I've had terrible luck with Wi Fi cameras. Oh, well, yeah, maybe where you're at, you know, I'm going to use Wi Fi for sure. So it's so if you're for, for me, sure going to use Wi Fi. Yeah, go for yeah, it. yeah. And really, what I've noticed. So this is my two cents is. Uh, unless you are going with a super high end 4K setup, like I have 1080p cameras set up, and you're still not going to catch that license plate of a car driving by. You're going to get an, a decent image of their face, right? But there's really, I mean, 720p, 1080, I think you're fine at that point, unless you step up to 4K. Between, there's no difference for me between 720 and 1080 that I've noticed as far as usability of the footage. I'm saying like it might be nice to look at a 1080 image, but I'm saying if someone is walking up to your home and you need to then report that image to the police, there's not going to be much difference between those two is what I've noticed because I have tried, I feel like, every cheap camera. But Jim, I've never seen this one. That's a great deal for a 720p Wi-Fi camera. I'm gonna give it a try. It was twenty bucks. I had a credit on my uh, on my account, so I brought it down to twenty bucks. Well, let and, me know how uh, it works because this could be. Uh, so all of these sort of cameras work with Sighthound. We all know that that's the. I love Sighthound. I've always said that's one of my favorite. It would also probably work with Blue Iris. Uh, actually, I'm 100 percent positive D-Link cameras do work with Blue Iris and Sighthound because I yeah. have I have a super old D-Link camera that was actually my first security camera. Like you said, I had one of those cheap ones. Um, and it's still, I can use it as an indoor camera if I need to. Yeah. And my, my home eight stuff is old and it's not really working anymore. I mean, right. it is, but it's not supported by stuff and it won't work with your sight hound. And so I've been looking for a cheap way to kind of get in. I don't want security cameras all over the place here, but I do, I have found great value in having one, you know, we have a bay window yeah. it sticks out. I put it right in the window. You see that light on, it's right there. It's on the inside. It's a perfect spot. You should try Blue Iris because Blue Iris is free. Okay. And I think it's I think it's open source. I think it's free. I'm um, pretty sure. And I would give it a shot. Or yeah. Sighthound is only $50 for two cameras. Right. That's not a bad software purchase. No. Sighthound, no. Sighthound is so easy. Blue Iris is complicated. There are so many tweaks you can make. Sighthound just works. Yeah. Uh, 50 bucks. Yeah, but well, I imagine there's an app. It's an addiction, can... though, Jim. Security uh, cameras are like cryptocurrency. I will warn you. Like when you get into it, you all of a sudden want a camera on every single corner. You're like, oh, I could add one more camera. No, I can, you know, like I can't see this corner, which would be nice for this reason. It's yeah. it's an addiction. I know, I know. It's I know it's coming, and it was 20 bucks for well, me. That, I mean, that was a great find. I have not seen. I was expecting to pay the when I when I looked it up at first, it said 35. And I, at thirty five bucks, I was that was I was okay. And then when I clicked on my own link, 
it took it down to uh, whatever I paid twenty. What's it say there? Twenty eight. So what is the difference between these two? There's one that's still thirty nine. Uh, twenty eight. Let's see. Let's look. I don't here. know what the difference is. Oh, there. I wonder if one's Wi-Fi and the other isn't. Uh, night camera vision. <laughs> Well, smart alerts. I bet. I bet that's the case, because the one built-in has built-in micro SD card, so you you don't have to do it. I don't know. No, there's really to, like no difference. I'll have to look. Is the model number the same? D DCS nine thirty six L. DCS nine thirty six L. They're the same thing. Um, Actually, the the more expensive one is the certified refurbished. That is weird. That is super weird. Well, that's Amazon. That's Amazon for you. That is Amazon. 28 bucks right now. Yeah. And well, I might, the I might just get this camera. I'm going to change at that, the at that price point. It's a great addition. Yeah. All right on. I'm going to change the price in the show notes to get you uh, to the right link here. Let's get that in there. Oh, in stock on June 11. So they're out of stock right now. Right. Yeah. I didn't get it. We all bought them out. <laughs> we just bought them out. Mine's coming in a week. So we'll, uh, we'll do it. Emily says, yes, Father's Day is done. That was awesome find. So good job, Emily. Way to pick that up. Yeah, it's a good little, a nice little surprise to get that in there. And it will replace that other, for me, it'll replace that other camera. That That'd thing that worked with, because I, Jim, I don't think you do either. I do not have any of the Alexa devices with the screen. Do you? No, I don't. No, I don't I think either. that was the feature on this. You say, Alexa, show me my whatever camera. And all of a sudden, if you have an Alexa device with a screen, it'll show you that camera. Which I've actually been pretty envious of. That's a pretty cool feature. It is pretty cool. Yeah. But none of my cameras that I've invested in now would work like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to, have to tell you it's coming. It's on its way. Yeah, I'll find, I agree. I'll have to find out when it gets here. Oh, mine, wait. Mine didn't add it to the cart. Oh, it's back up. No. <laughs> Literally, I clicked no. add to cart and it said your cart's empty. And then I went back and it's $35.99. I mean, seven more dollars. It is. That dude, that is super bizarre. Hold on. I've never had that happen. I've heard people in stock now. I've heard people saying this happens, but you're right. When I clicked on that link, oh man, that's a bummer. Emily, did you get it for the, for that's the 20? My question is, did Emily get it for, for 20 the 28 bucks? I got it for Canada. No, Emily's here. Emily's in the United States. Oh, so no, no, she's, she's in the United States. Yeah, I got it for twenty eight, and I had an eight dollar. Um, wow. Yeah, my. But there's two in stock if you buy at thirty five dollars. So I'll get mine before you, but I'm gonna pay seven dollars more for it. That so I'm still gonna is, get it, dude. That is hilarious. Why would that have happened? That's, That's funny because it popped up. It said, "Do you want the protection plan?" Because did it ask you it did, for it your did. protection? It I did. said yeah. no. Nope. And then it said nope. your cart's empty. I wonder if there was just a few left, and we bought them. Emily and I bought them before you got. You could get them. Yeah. That's hilarious. Well, it pretty funny. it's pretty It's five bucks more. It's never seven bucks more. It's not that big oh, of a deal. No yeah. Way. No, it's run out at 30 at 35 bucks or 36 bucks. Still pretty good. I think for a D link. Camera. Yeah. They have, um, for 35 or 36, you can also get, that is the price I was at for this SV three C dome cameras. They're POE 1080p cameras. Make sure though. I have learned that if you need the night vision on it, don't even use it. Uh, so I, luckily I have them in an area where it's right by my front porch. My porch lights are on. So it's enough light at night that it's not relying on the night uh, vision, but it's a great dome. I mean, it looks like a legit dome camera because it is. Uh, and I think those are in 35 as well. Cool. Yeah, it's really that market has really gotten average. We got an average guy. Totally. You know, the average guy. Now that you can a jump great in time there. to look into security systems. Total. That's a no, I could nerd out on a security system for a whole show, Jim. If we ever want to go into exact detail on how I run my system. Uh, um, Emily's saying, Mike, uh, between her and me, we're going to send you 350 each. So you'll be, you'll be taken care of. Oh, good. At that point. That Emily, she's just fantastic. She is. She is just fantastic. Well, there you go. A couple gifts for dad, if you're thinking about, uh, or some wives, you know, do things for their husbands on Father's Day. And so <laughs> if you're, if you're doing that, that's, that's awesome. I just, but. Let's be honest, guys. We we buy our own stuff in the most in, in most cases, we buy our own stuff. I just did. I just bought my own Father's Day gift tonight. So there it is. And uh Mike, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. My, uh, the voice kind of held up. 
it's kind of not though. So I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, love it every week. This has been a fun new way we've been doing the show. I've been enjoying enjoying it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'll remind everyone: hang around for a little crypto in the post show. We're still gonna still gonna do that. There's a few updates to do on that if you're following along and with stay us. Stay active on, on the Facebook page so that we can have some conversation for next week. Yeah, no, right on. I, I will say if you go to the Facebook page and you leave a comment and it's appropriate for what we're talking about here, I'll bring it in. We'll we'll make it the first part of the show each week. I think that works out pretty well if it gets too busy i won't be able to bring them all in but we'll see what we can do uh, throw them out there and uh would love to hear what you have to say facebook.com slash group slash the average guy um get you there as well don't forget if you want to head if you want to hear the post show or the crypto conversation that we're going to have or whatever we decide sometimes we talk about mowers we just do it's just what we do that was a fun conversation i enjoyed that it was one. good it was a good conversation if you missed the mower comp mike Let's do a quick update. How how you how you enjoying the mower? <laughs> I mow every three days now. Actually, I joked with Hannah because she's been telling me she goes, "Okay, just because you got a new mower and it's a riding mower doesn't mean you have to mow every two days." So I had mowed Sunday, Monday night. I'm like, "Hey, I'm gonna head out for a quick mow." She goes, "Wait, no, you just mowed yesterday." I'm like, "I'm just joking." But she was, uh, "It's it's so much fun to mow with that new mower. I'm I'm very happy." Cub Cadet has so far been a great purchase. No no buyer's remorse, which I thought how, there might how be. How long's it taking? So uh, total, we so I I edge, I blow the sidewalks, I do all that stuff. Used to take me about four hours, four hours and fifteen minutes. Now it takes me an hour and a half. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Good work. That's almost three hours a week of my life back that I that I get. I can I can mow and and that includes I double the backyard, so I go over it and I go over it again because the backyard's where we you know have people over, so I want to make sure it's nice and. Looks like yeah. carpet back there. I still would have gone with the robot lawnmower. Just I know. I wasn't. I came. I wasn't ready to give it up. I was not. I love mowing my lawn. I, no, I really do. No, I take I pride it. in it. I wasn't it. ready to give I it up. Ha- I hate it. I'll remind everyone if you <laughs> want to listen to the crypto conversation, head over to Patreon, our, our Patreon page, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. Get you there. Send me an email, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. You can track me down on Twitter at Jay Collison is the way to do it. Uh, join us on our Facebook page again, uh, facebook.com slash group slash the average guy. Don't forget the average guy TV platform, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting for people that you know, and you trust. And don't forget, I'm having Christian on June 11th. So if you're around that Tuesday night, same time, 8 PM, come out and join us for cyber frontiers. But uh, we appreciate Ma- Maple Grove partners for their sponsorship of the show. You can find them at maplegrovepartners.com. Com. And then don't forget, you can listen to Home Gadget Geeks on our Android or iPhone app, both provided by and sponsored by LastPass. If you're not using LastPass, I don't know why. I don't know why. They have free plans or the sponsored or the paid plans, 25 bucks. You should be doing it. It's super easy. I can't live without it, Mike. So head out, support them, support us. Head out to HomeGadgetGeeks.com and download that app. It's free for you today. All right. Voice is about done. We're going into some crypto conversation. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.